with those head studs, man. <laughs> well, I'm not Josh Bader. Well then, <laughs> New Year's went there. All right, guys. <laughs> he brought the trailer. He gave us the okay as soon as it pulled up on the trailer. Now that was that it. Crazy. That was already messed up. That means you instantly get to bring the trailer map. <sighs> You ready, bud? Ready to do it. Just like that, just shut off. Well, I've been here before. guys and welcome to this new video and we are now in Portland as you saw in my short clip there we we're headed to the airport and now we are here obviously there's no real way to have cameras out in the airport but if you take a look look at all this stuff that we shipped over to Steve's house big shout out to him for letting me ship all this here for the Evo look at that guys that's a new standalone ECU for the Evo we got all new fuel lines for the Evo 8 a.m. feed, 6 a.m. return, all our fittings that you could ever want, new air motive regulator, air motive gauge, fuel filter, we got some radium parts here, a new fuel hanger. Oh, told Steve when the last time we were on the dyno, we were gonna do this right. So that's exactly what we did. We went ahead, got everything taken care of here. Big shout out to uh, Torch Solutions, Dan, for taking care of me and getting these parts here as fast as he could. We also did get a flex fuel kit for it. So now with having that standalone link, we'll be able to have flex fuel, never have any issues, because as you guys have known, we don't have ethanol where I live, so we, I have to have it in a barrel. Granted, that's not too big of an issue since when I get home, I just have the barrels there, so usually I end up leaving them on E85 all the time anyways. But I'm gonna get this stuff all loaded up we got a rental car. I'll show you guys what it is here in just a moment. There she is, guys. Shout out to Steve. We get to use his 600 wheel horsepower on the Mustang Forester. This thing has a full STI drivetrain in it and has a rotated setup on it with a 6266. You guys definitely have to check out his channel if you want to see more on us. So I'll go ahead and link it over there. But let's let this thing start up. Let it warm up, and we're gonna get heading to the shop. Man, look at these new seats, guy. Heated and cooled. That's right, AC Recaros. This thing is so nice. All right, guys, let's get in here. I'll take down that here in just a moment. Do a little cold start for the boys. And grab the keys out here. I want to do this. We got everything out of the Forester. Let's get on inside. Woo! Guys, we left the Evo here. And it's been here for over a month since the last time we were over here. There she is, all tucked away. Steve's legacy, right above it. This is how we always were back when I used to be at the shop all the time. 
our cars are always over the top, under the top, whatever you want to say. But now I can get set up for this thing and we got a ton of new parts. So while I get set up, I'm gonna throw the camera on the charger because, you know, normal style, I didn't charge it. So gonna get this thing thrown on the charger, figure out how to turn on the, some lights or maybe open some doors, we'll see. What do you think guys? Cold start for the boys? I think so. We didn't get to bring our uh, tripod down, so that really does suck. But that's all right. I'll do my best here. I'm gonna set the camera up. And I don't know the last time this thing was started. Could have been a month ago. Could have been last week. I don't know. So I'm gonna go ahead and set the camera up. We're gonna get a cold start for the boys. This is on E85. And this is also on the less than pleasant fuel system that's in the car. So if it struggles, eh, it probably will. We'll see. That wasn't that bad guys, I'm actually pretty surprised. Started right up. So now what's left is we just need to move some of the stuff out of the way here. Steve's working on his car up there right now. So I'm gonna be as gentle as I can, move his interior pieces over to the side for us here, maybe clean this up a little bit. And then uh, I'll have to roll this out so we can use the lift back here so that we can do our fuel lines. So I'm gonna get that taken care of guys. And I don't think I'm gonna be able to set this camera up really anywhere, but if I can, I'll give it a shot. Now that we got things moved around, we got our area all cleaned up. Probably gonna clean up that bench over there so that way I can lay the parts out and show you guys. And yes, I'm out of breath from pushing that thing in. Woo! It doesn't have any kind of steering in it at all or brakes, so that was fun. So let me get this bench cleaned off. Once I do, then I'll be able to show you guys all the parts we're working with.
I got all this laid out here, chain of plans, different table, but got it all laid out and let's get this explained to all you guys. So taking a look here, first thing we're gonna start out with, Steve was tuning stock ECU on the car. Very limited, not many options to do. Obviously flex fuel, there's only a couple people that can do it. So it just made sense to go ahead and do a standalone ECU in the car. Uh, the reason why I went link is because the same thing I always tell you guys to do. If you're looking at upgrading your car and especially things that are this important where it's a tuning software, make sure to run it by your tuner because they need to be happy. Link, that is something that Steve's used on his own car for the last two years. So we know he knows their software and he's not gonna have any troubles having to go through and learn it. So that's the reason why we went with the Link. Also, it's really nice because it's a straight plug and play feature into the factory ECU uh, housing. So literally just take the housing apart, take the old scent, the old brain out of the, the housing, put this in and we're done. So that's gonna be super cool. We are gonna have some features we gotta wire up. That's what we're gonna come to here in a second. But we have radium here. Now this is the thing that held up this build the most of, this is what held up the build here because radium has been closed all the way through July because of the Corona that's been going on. So we had to wait for them to reopen and to be able to make the part. So we have one of their uh, dual pump painters here. This is two Walbro 450s in this hanger ready to go. I will be opening that to show you guys what these two boxes are here. This is a uh, wiring kits on for both pumps. So they come in each package there. Then moving over here, we have an STM adapter for our fuel rail to be able to go to uh, 8 a.m. inlet on there and get rid of that factory style that's coming off of there. So I'll show you more on that too as we go. These are our fittings for our new regulator. And that's right guys, I did go ahead and do a whole brand new fuel system with this car. We do have an AM regulator, which is what I had on my last Evo that did make a thousand wheel horsepower. But I figured since we're in here, we're gonna go ahead and do it the way we want. And we did a brand new Aeromotive A1000 regulator for this. We have their gauge here, and we have one of their uh, stainless micro filters here. This, I believe this is a uh, 6 AN. It's either 10 or six, guys. I know, I do know that uh, Fuel Lab has the six. I don't remember if this is a six or not. I believe it's a, a 10 AN. Um, we had to get our Y adapter here to Y both our pumps into one dash eight feed. So that's what that is there. Then we have a whole assortment of fittings. I did go ahead and go with this teal color. Uh, it looks like uh, the company here is Color Fittings. If any of you want to check them out, this is not a sponsored ad or anything like that. But looks like they have, sorry, I'm looking at this, colorfittings.com is what it says right there. So if you want to check these out or you want color fittings, they make them in all different sorts of colors, uh, including like purple that the tile uses. I chose teal. I think that's going to be our color. We're going to end up going with the same. So that's why I went with that. Then right here, we have Flex Fuel Kit by Innovative. Big shout out Torque Solution. They got this over to us and it has a sensor in there that we'll need everything to wire that in. And then obviously we have our fuel line. We have 8 a.m. feed, 6 a.m. return. As you can see here, we got two bags, 20 feet of each. Should be plenty to do this fuel system in this car. So super excited guys. This is one of those scenarios where you bought a modified car, not knowing what's been modified. You know, you're just taking word of mouth or receipts. This car came with a lot of receipts. Um, I was told it had a Busher Racing double pumper in it and I'm not, how do you put this? I don't work on Evos every day. So seeing a Busher Racing uh, hanger, I'm not sure what it's gonna look like, but I can tell you what's in there is janky. And I would hope that's not a Busher, Ra Busher Racing double pumper hanger. But you guys will see it when I pull it out of there. You can leave in the comments if it is or not. But regardless, I wasn't happy of it. And we had some weird lines coming off of it to like an O'Reilly's uh, carbureted fuel filter. So that was weird on there as well. And that might've been some of the restriction we were having because everyone said that you can make all the power on stock fuel lines. Maybe you can. I didn't just prefer not to because we had such a high pressure idle that it was causing issues. I mean, you'd go come into power, obviously it'd be rich because we have more fuel there. And then you go into power and it'd be lean and it'd have to come back down and it just wasn't right. So we're doing it the correct way. This is a correct way. And if you have the means to do it, please do it the correct way. And that's what we're gonna be doing today. So very happy. I'm gonna get this radium hanger out and we're gonna take a look at it together and see what it looks like because I'm super excited to see how nice of a piece that is. 
that is what we use on the Subarus as well. And that is what's in our Hyper Blue as well. We're pushing beyond the limits of that. So don't take that as a you know, comparison. But we're gonna pull this thing out. We're gonna check it out and we're gonna get to work. So we got this out of the box and I'm having some concerns guys. Um, it looks like we're gonna need some fittings here because these are not what we're gonna be using. These hook up to the factory fuel lines and it looks like we need a 6AN ORB, 6AN ORB and an 8AN ORB. So we're gonna have to make a run to the parts store up here. Thankfully, they should have those. I really, really hope so. Um, I'm gonna take a look too because I brought some fittings as well. So I'm gonna take a look at those, but this is definitely a super nice piece. This gets rid of the piece that holds us down in there. I'll have to show you once we get in there, but definitely a nice piece. Probably should have looked at it more or called him about this, or, so I was more prepared, but I did bring some fittings. So let's see if I brought everything that we might need. Probably not. Well, that would be nice if it was an 8 an to 8 an but that's an 8 an to a 6, so that's not gonna help us. This though, that's a 6 to a 6 an so we are gonna use that, and looks like we got another one there, so that's good news. We got two, but we're still gonna need, yeah, see there's another 6 to 8. We do need another 8 an to 8 an ORB, just like these there, guys. Yeah, they have the rubber. That's what ORB stands for. All right, well, we'll put these over here with the rest of our stuff. And I do know that we need to get something to be able to cut these fuel lines anyways. So, looks like we're going to Harbor Freight. Hopefully it's close. I think it's like a 15, 20 minute drive. It's been a while since I lived here, guys. But, looks like we gotta go to Harbor Freight. I'm gonna look around real quick, make sure we don't need anything else. Cause if we do, now is the time to figure it out. So let me see and we'll come back. Wow guys, these things in the packaging don't do any justice. Just look at how nice these are. These are really vivid, nice color, and they look awesome. So these are gonna be exciting to put on there. I was just looking at these before I left. So that way I could see if we needed to get um, an AN wrench, which pretty sure we're going to need to. So another thing to add to the list. We are back from our parts run finally and Thankfully, they had one of these 8 and AORB for our fuel pump outlet. And uh, while I was out, I went ahead and went to Harbor Freight because we needed to get some cutoff wheels. So that way we could cut our fuel lines. Also, we got some zip ties too. And if you guys, just a little tip for you. They have these at Harbor Freight and I've used them with good luck. Heat shrink connectors and they're only like seven bucks. Now, if you go to O'Reilly's, this one little deal here was freaking six bucks, and they charge you for each one of these. So, if you ever doing that, much worth your time to go to Harbor Freight. So, we got those. We got our fittings that we need for this scene. We are finally ready to get into the car and start taking that old Hainer out. Then I can compare to this one, like I was telling you guys, and show you the differences. So, let me go ahead and get the scene unlocked. And I believe I have the fuel containers back there, so we need to get those out. So let's uh, get those out here. Yeah, I knew it was gonna be locked. So unlock this thing. And as you can see, we have our fuel containers because I was just trying to keep things out of their way here since the car was here for over a freaking month. I don't think they wanted to deal with this stuff in their way. So we're gonna take all these these over there I think this one might still have some in it nope well then we might have to go get some more E85 guys because I thought we had some more apparently not oh well I just left this uh, seat chilling here because uh, well we knew we had issues so we're gonna take this thing out here and put that aside Ta -da. now we can get in here and definitely have some very poor lighting. What the? Well, looks like I uh, had a bunch of connectors still, guys, that I forgot all about. Guess that's what happens when you leave a freaking car here for that long. You don't really remember. So, let me look around, see if I can find a light. 
That way you guys can see what's going on. If not, I'm just gonna pull this hanger out real quick. Knock this out. Uh, I don't see any light, but we can pull this cover off and then we can get into there. As you can see, this is our relay. We have new ones. I'm just gonna redo them. And yeah, so let me get this thing off and find the light. Well, no luck on the light, but I was able to get that fuel hanger out of there and I'm gonna show you guys exactly what I mean side by side of these hangers. So here we have them here. This is the new radium one. So you see there that usually has that round piece that goes on and this is what bolts to the tank. We no longer have to use that. We are now using this that bolts directly in, super nice. And then here's this janky thing. So probably works just fine, not really digging how it is i did clean up it a lot when i was in here and put these 450s on but our stock lines were what holding us back and that being said we're gonna get those pulled out of the car so let me get this thing put on the rack for the lift and we're gonna start pulling those lines out underneath the car now hopefully this lighting's decent enough this is what i'm talking about look at this janky filter look at these janky clamps this whole fuel system is just jank so that's what we're gonna be ripping out of here i'm gonna get this freaking thing out of the way get those fuel lines out of here and create you know a fresh starting point so let me get these things out like I said i don't got my tripod so i'm just gonna get them pulled out guys yeah I told my squad we gonna make it out, one way or the other, yeah. I had some hoop dreams, but no jumping like I'm at them. My pen is too clean, so I had to stick with rapping. My life is hella deep, dog. you couldn't even fathom. My goals are like Twitter, you can see I'm staying at them. I'm trying to be the GOAT, every day I'm chasing ghosts like I'm Danny Phantom. And I can sell a nigga, but I'd rather sell a hit, it's my niche. And business sent the beat, so I had to hit the switch. And now you're all in, I ain't on the fence. All these rappers peep my game, I ain't talking Twitch. Man, I'm trying to get rich i'm trying to make my wrist match the plaques i started from the bottom i ain't going back told all the dogs we gonna make it out i would never fall you can't take me out i'm popping like a zig i'm breaking out and i am hella lit you want a couch they said i wasn't good enough but that sin went near and not the other and they don't want to see me shine like they close the shutters but when i said i'm now i was able to get our two lines ran right now you can see we have our return right here and we have our feed that is a 90 on that one and you can see it comes through and loops around and then we have a 45 on this one and i know lighting's poor guys i do apologize best i can do right now and those are running underneath the car as you can see i have them dropped down now one thing that was suggested by radium was to drop the tank so lower it down so that you can get that hanger in there much easier so now what I'm going to do, since I have my lines in there, I'm going to go ahead and lift the car and I'm going to re-put up the gas tank so I can make sure it's not going to pinch our new fuel lines. Um, I've never ran fuel lines on an Evo before, so I just want to make sure I'm running them in the right spot. So I'm going to go ahead and go up in the air. We're going to get this tank bolted back into place and we're going to see how our lines are and how they're clearing just to make sure we may need to leave the tank down to be able to get our fitting through there. So we might have to do this a couple times, but I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing up in there. I'm gonna get it bolted up and I'm gonna let you guys know if I put them in the right spot and where you should do it if you're trying to do it at home. So let me get this thing up and we'll continue on. <laughs> So I got my tank all mounted back up and I got a light out here to try to help show. 
But you can see where I put them here. Thank you to a friend of mine, Misiel. He was uh, telling me to run them over by these brake lines over here, and I know that's probably not helping. To be honest, it probably would just work better with just a camera and no light. But take a look at these lines. I know I'm zoomed in. Hang on. So we have them coming down right here, and you can see I got movement. They're not pinched or anything like that. We got plenty of room right over here. So that's where they're gonna go, guys. I do believe I'm gonna have to drop this thing down though so I can get the fittings through because right, right now what I'm seeing, it's very tight. So I'm gonna start running these through on the bottom of the car here and we're gonna figure out where we're gonna mount our um, fuel filter and then we're just gonna run the return all the way up to the regulator, which we gotta mount that. So let's start getting these ran and let's find a place for this fuel filter. Look who came to visit. Hey, what's up? He wanted to be on <laughs> YouTube again. That way you can see his face. Yeah. Oh, you even dressed your hair up for me today. I know, man. I put gel in my hair, which I usually don't. I'm pretty jealous. Oh. You have hair. <laughs> I don't got hair. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Which your bars don't mind. <laughs> oh, what is this? This is not fair. <laughs> he came all the way up just to hang out with us today, help us on the Evo. Because yeah. I had nothing else better to do. Only took him what it is. You know, about five hours late. Maybe I, yeah. Maybe I can scam Josh and to help me install <laughs> a fuel pump. But it looks like he's got a lot more work to do. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, he happen. doesn't know. We're going to do it anyways. You know how I was talking fuel pump? Yeah. <laughs> I just put that video up today for you. Oh, did you? Yeah, it's all about fuel pumps. Oh, shit. See, okay. he doesn't. He's going to go watch it now, guys. Well, we got the hainer inside here. I started doing some wiring on it, but we had to go get a nice lighter for heat shrink. And I have my lines ran underneath the car right now, which you're not going to see because it's obviously down. But you can see I have one in the edge of edges lane here right now. I did get the regulator mounted up in the same spot I had the other one, so it's kind of tucked over here. This system is not going to have one going into one side of it. It will just only be using one port on our regulator and then the bottom's the return. Um, the other thing that we needed to do was change out the fitting on the fuel rail that I talked about. So if you take a look there, we now have an 8AN fitting on there before it was a line that actually bolted to there. And you can see just how small that is. Yeah, it's gonna be a huge difference, guys. Just to show, yeah, it's probably not gonna show. But it's gonna be a huge difference. Uh, we had to go pick up some stuff for our flex fuel sensor. And in the meantime, when I'm working on this, I'm gonna get him to pull his fuel pump. Because yeah. uh, sounds like we're gonna have some issues here soon. We don't. Yeah, we don't. <laughs> Look at this. He's a bigger turbo. That's what you need right there, buddy. <laughs> I know. 6870, let's Holy go. Shit. Oh man. Everything you need wish. to make 900. 900, ooh. Ooh. I don't know about the, with those head studs, man. <laughs> oh, they'll hold for one pass. <laughs> all you need, one pass, that's all you that's need. That's all right? you need, one. one. <laughs> I actually had a customer that had 11 millimeter head studs, yeah. closed deck, built yeah. heads. He made 680 on the Mustang, translates right around 780. Yeah. Right. And uh, that was on uh, 46 pounds on a 6766. Six, six. Holy shit. And it didn't have any issues with those little 11 millimeter studs. Hmm. They were putting in work. Oh, I can't cuss on the channel. Oh, <laughs> he, he will anyways, guys. Every time. I'm bad at that, Always. Yeah. My <laughs> channel, he's cussing. His, I'm no. definitely cussing. That's how it goes. But I'm going to get back to work. I'm going to start knocking out this wiring. I don't have my stand, so I'm just going to do it and then show you guys. And I'm going to get him to go pull his fuel system apart so he doesn't get stranded here. Because, yeah. uh, Sounds like his fuel pump's about to die. AM 340. Needs there that sponsorship, go. boys. Where's our radium units? I know. Oh, no. I need to open back up and start sending me some fuel stuff. They sent me mine. Well, I'm not Josh Bader. Well then. <laughs> we just went there. All right, guys, let's get to work. <laughs> Boom. Check that out. Look at that, guys. Very nice. Very nice, how much? First time ever having a brand new standalone, at least buying a brand new standalone. My last Evo had an AMV2, but like I say, always accommodate what your tuner wants. He knows this, so why not <laughs> get it. this so he doesn't struggle. I love it. Learning it is what it would be. So makes these, his day easier, so why not? Yeah, these ECUs, they work really well. Um, I run these in my cars and I've tuned a lot of them. and. The cool thing about these ECUs is they're plug and play. They go right in and they just they just work. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I don't really ever have any issues with them. They're very easy to use, uh, they're predictable. And 
just saves a lot of time when you're tuning a car. I mean, oh, yeah. it's less things you have to worry about. Uh, my car, I mean, I literally switched uh, my drag car over to that ECU and it was the seam most seamless swap I've ever done. I, I literally just swapped it over, plugged it in and hooked up the inputs I wanted, loaded up just a base map file that they come with and the car actually fired right up after plugging my injectors in and I was off and tuning within 30 minutes. So really happy yep. with it. I've never had an issue. Um, it made my car work so much better mm -hmm. than the factory computer. So I'm excited to see it on the Evo. Just turn it up, turn it up. All the way up. <laughs> Always. Now that I got all my lines ran, and we know where we're going to be cutting them, as you can tell, I got a zip tie there, and I know it's going to be hard to see, but you can see this. There's a zip tie. And I got my other one. Now I got to pull these back out, so I had to drop the tank back down. And now I'm going to pull these things back out of here, get them cut, put the fittings on them, and then clean them, and put them back in for final assembly. Then we can start running the rest of our front lines, we got our fuel filter on. I ended up having to go over to a Weldon because the air motive I bought was 10 a.m. and I need eight. So Steve was kind enough to give me this one off of his car since we're kind of in a rushed environment. So I'm just gonna order him a new one. And you can see my hot boy fittings right here. Same adjust, so we're just running to there right now. And then we'll be able to mount this thing up properly. But I'm gonna take these back out of the car, get them cut, get my fittings on, and get them in here for final fitment. Action. All right guys, so we got our fittings all screwed on to our hanger. We took all the hoses out of the car, cleaned them out real good, got our final fitment on, tightened them on. Now we're ready to go ahead and start cleaning up this wiring here, which you can tell it's pretty clean, but we had to leave it undone so we can run it through our hanger cover so that way we can cover this all up. Put a nice uh, fitting in here so that way we won't hurt the wires. But now I can go ahead and start grabbing these wires, running them through this cover so that way we can get this thing all sealed up. I did make sure to go ahead and double check these to make sure they're tight so that way we shouldn't have any fuel leaks. Fingers crossed. We all know how that goes with fan fittings, right? <laughs> Your car. Yeah, yeah. Peeing everywhere. <laughs> that is true. Yep. So now we're just going to get these ran through here. I'm going to start grabbing one by one and this will be uh, pump number two. The only reason why you'd really want to pay attention to which pump is what, if you have a hob switch and you're trying to decide, you know, if you had a different pump, that's the only time that you're really going to be concerned about which pump you have otherwise they're both the same pumps it doesn't matter which one comes on later or which one you wire to what so just carefully going to put this through here since i haven't put a grommet in here yet so that way we're not trying to cut up our wire because obviously we do that and we're not having a good time from me burning the whole car to the ground right that would suck yeah don't worry jr would blame me <laughs> now i'll go through here look we got it wrapped around the light damn it so we got our first one through there. So it'll look just like that pretty much, guys. Now I gotta do the same process about 80 more times in this horrible mess of wiring, which I'm sure some of you are looking at and are just terrified right now from all these wires. But I promise you, it's just power and ground. It's very simple. You know, you're not gonna feel comfortable at doing it until you just do it. And then once you do it and have the knowledge of it just being power and ground, you guys will ha never have an issue again. Oh, yeah. It's like Josh is installing some relays. He doesn't want to talk right now because he's really pissed off. <laughs> yeah, let's just leave him alone for right now. So these are the radium relays. Pretty cool. Tired. You look tired, Josh. <laughs> feel pretty tired. Yeah. <laughs> just oh, some progress. Yeah. Oh, we won't show them that yet. We're good back here. <laughs> but we got all yeah. of our wiring 100% done on the car. We just need to get some electrical tape so I can go ahead and button up, clean it up, make it look really nice because as JR sees, I'm pretty picky of it. Yeah. But we did get all the wiring done on the car. Uh, I've yet to put the fuses in just until we get 100% done and got the lines actually hooked up. As you guys saw in our last clip, we got the lines cleaned out and permanently on. So now we need to go back up in the air and we got to get that tank mounted back up because we had to drop it to get the fittings through, just the front of it. And we're going to get that mounted up and we're going to run our lines up and we'll get them all tied up. And then we can just focus on hooking up our flex fuel kit and our feed line. And then from there, we're pretty much done with this fuel system. Boom, and done. <laughs>
Our driver's over there tired. I don't know if he's gonna want to say anything. Guys, it's been a long day. This is probably what we just agreed at about 10 o'clock and been working on this since about 9 this morning. So o over 12 hours into it today, uh, doing a complete fuel system overhaul. And, you know, like I was talking with JR here, you know, it's just something you can't rush because if you do end up rushing it, guys, you could totally lose your whole investment of your car. I have seen people lose their cars in fires before, so it's very important you take your time, make sure it's done right. And that's what we've been doing today. And we're just at almost at the end of it here. We're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. We're getting ready to prime the system and we're gonna check for leaks. And then we're gonna set our fuel pressure regulator, let the car come up to a full warm idle to do so. And pretty excited, can't wait. So all this hard work's gonna pay off and we're about to make some power, guys. Ooh. Come on, Josh, the starter up, man. What are you waiting for? No, right? Almost forgot the damn fuse. <laughs> All right, moment of truth, Josh. You ready to turn this key? Hey, you do what you need to do, man. We're gonna see, with one pump on here, what's gonna happen. No. It's gonna come on when I try to start it. I know these things are kind of different like that. Yeah. So it has fuel. Alright Josh, everything's good? We're good? Everything's good. Car runs, yep. dyno tomorrow? Maybe? Dino, maybe the next day. Yeah, maybe next day. Okay. We got too many customers to do tomorrow. So, okay. unfortunately, personal stuff always comes last. Um, mine will end up probably coming on, when, or on Monday, the following day, today being Saturday. So, everybody will get their cars done tomorrow. Um, in the meantime, I still need to put the Link ECU in this, a standalone and we need to do the flex fuel and wire it. But right now we did the hardest part. We got the fuel system 100% done in the car. Um, the only other thing that I might change tomorrow is we might connect the other fuel pump to the ECU. Forgetting that we had a standalone, because I'm not used to having those, we can actually turn on our secondary fuel pump with the ECU instead of using a hop switch. So that is a pretty nice feature. I think we're probably gonna end up utilizing that and I will probably change that tomorrow. But as of right now, with one fuel pump, we are right at 43 to 44 PSI at idle on fuel pressure. Before this, we were at 95 PSI, guys. So definitely a big upgrade on the car. Definitely what it needed and for it to make reliable power. So we went ahead and fixed it. That's going to wrap up tonight. We're going to have to wait for tomorrow to see more. Cool. All right. Time to go home. Yep. Get some rest. Okay, so get some rest and then come back in the morning and do it all over. Cool. <laughs> Peace out, guys. <laughs> Living life up in the fast lane. Hey. Living life up in the fast lane. Living life up in the fast lane. Fast lane. Turn me up. And I ain't slowing down. I ain't slowing down. I ain't slowing down. Living life up in the fast lane.